Welcome to the St. Joseph Radio Presents live program broadcasting to you from the Rome of the West, St. Louis, Missouri. The program that for over 30 years has brought you eloquent speakers from across the globe to help explain, clarify, and evangelize the Catholic faith. Our program covers a variety of topics relating to current issues and occurrences in our daily lives. Now, with the aid of technology, we are able to bring the gospel message to the four corners of the world, where Christ himself did say, those who have ears ought to hear. It is our hope at St. Joseph Radio that through these programs, we can help evangelize the world and change one soul at a time. Now, here is your host to introduce today's guest and topic. Welcome, my friends. It's going to be a great day here at St. Joseph Radio Presents as we are coming to you live from the Rome of the West in St. Charles, Missouri, a beautiful suburb of St. Louis. That is correct. My name is Matt Logman, and also aiding me in bringing this to you is Peter Karutz. Good morning, afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, good morning. I think we're right on the edge over there. Hey, how do you feel about that, you introducing yourself? Is it a little bit... Kind of like looking in the mirror, and the mirror's talking back at you. In a, in, Deja vu, maybe? <laughs> it's all over again, right? Yeah. It's like only yesterday, I recall, yeah. recording that. Yeah, And it is a great day and a great season. We're in the middle of the Christmas, not Christmas, we're in the middle of the Advent season, and we're contemplating Christmas, and we'll be in the Christmas season, and that's all happy stuff. And we're going to not talk about happy stuff, kind of, maybe? Well, I think we discussed earlier that the problem with the season is people forget the reason for the season, and they are going through life without fingernails right now, worried about every little thing, when all they should be worried about is their soul and how our coming Savior comes and finds their soul. Yeah, there you are. It is that simple. Yeah. So we're we're actually uh, debating on the name of the program here, and we'll we'll maybe uh, you'll listening to us and praying for us will help us. But we're going to talk about evil in the world, or as I said, finding evil in the world. I don't think we have to try too hard to find it, but the whole reason why our Lord came is because we have this evil in the world. We have concupiscence. We have a fallen state. But if we ignore it then we're never going to be able to do our part to combat it, right? I mean, I think that's what the devil wants in some respects. Peter, you're exactly right, because the sooner we all realize that this is a spiritual battlefield... It is. We are never going to be ready for the battle if we don't realize that. If you ignore your enemy... I mean, I have this... I saw this movie, what was it, Where when a World War I movie, and there was a... There's a horse in the movie, and they, they really. They, I thought you were Nickelodeon. Yeah, no, and and they, they they wind up riding across. It's trench warfare and whatnot, but you can't ignore the enemy. I mean, it's, it, they only do that in the movies where you 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 ride across the battlefield with. But there is an enemy. There is a war, right? We've are we are going to win. We know the end of the movie, but don't ignore the enemy. That is what. Uh, you've you've seen the screw tape letters. Well, when you say we're going to win, not everybody does. Ah, our Lord wins, our Lord wins. But what I'm what, what, the the but during the battle, I mean, you you remember the screw tape letters where the 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 chief demon is talking to his apprentice demon, and and one of the advices he gives him is that. You know, the, the, the apprentice demon says, you know, they don't believe in me. They don't, they don't think that there's... And he's like, good, that's what we want. You know, ignore it, ignore it. Don't, don't, even, don't even acknowledge it's there. You need to see the problem if you're going to work toward the solution. If he comes under the radar, boom. Right. There it's too go. late. It's too late. It, it's, it's too late. Well, we're, we're ignoring, ignoring the problem. You know, I... I, I talked to, you know, we're, we're debating about the title still, but finding evil in the world. And I think some of us uh, say, well, I'm, I'm living a good life, I'm, I'm doing the right thing, but I, I'm still confronted with evil. And I don't think it's a, a problem, I think it's a truism. I heard somebody say once, and I, I really like it, they said, if you don't run into evil periodically in your walk, you must be walking in the same direction. 
In other words, if you're fighting against evil, you are walking in the opposite direction. You're going to cross, right? So be ready and be strong and be prepared. Well, when you said finding evil, I think all you have to do is turn on the TV. Yeah. So it's not that difficult to find evil. Yeah. So yeah. I'm still kind of like a, you know debating on that title, yeah. really. I know. Hey, I don't look. I, I I tell everybody I have at least two colossal bad ideas every day. We're still working this out. Maybe we should have them call in and give us suggestions. For I, I would love for that to happen. <laughs> give us a title. We're 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 working toward it. You know, Bob and Clayton want to talk to people. Like. <laughs> yeah. You know. I mean, finding evil in the world. But he's saying no. Yeah. All right. Well. Well. There we are. But, but anyway. So as long as we're looking for help. Um, and you want to keep your job, uh, don't we have a prayer to do? Yes. And I will start us off with the name right. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Merciful Father, we come to you broken. We come to you sick, looking for the divine, looking for the, the grace that you can only give us. Father, as we approach you, please find us humble, meek, and able to receive these gifts so that our light can be bright, that we can shine it for ourselves and for our family and our friends, the path that leads to you, that leads to you, my Lord. We ask this grace through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you now in heaven forever. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. This is an ongoing series that we have every third Saturday. It's evangelization moment. So maybe to get a little bit more focus, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to talk about evil for a purpose. We want to, to, to talk about how we can evangelize, right? We're just, we're not clergy. Nobody here has a collar on. We don't have degrees in, in, in theology, but we keep pursuing our I call. I have a seminarian. Well, you're way ahead of me then. That's right. And I met him the other day. I heard that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he, he, he said that? Yes, uh, yes. I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did he say I was mean? No, no, no very good. nice. Yeah, well. He said he knew your face, and he finally <laughs> knows you now. <laughs> oh, that's good. But here, here is the problem with evil in the world. I think it's a good excuse, and it's a perpetuating problem, a perpetuating problem. I, I, I have had conversations with friends, business partners, uh, acquaintances, who will say, I do not believe in God because there is evil in the world. And this is a bigger problem than, than it sounds like on the surface. One, it tends to be the classic excuse to reject God, and the rejection of God is what perpetuates, perpetuates the evil in the world. I'm going to say that again. The, the most common reason I have seen for people to reject God, be an atheist, is to say God allows bad things to happen to good people. He allows evil in the world. And conversely, the reason why we have evil in the world is because you have people who reject God. It is a self-fulfilling prophecy. It is a constant motion machine. One perpetuates the other. And it is a lie. And we need, as regular baptized people, to be prepared to combat this lie. So, Someone comes to you and says, I don't believe in God. You, you know the next thing they're going to say is, why does God belong bad things to happen to good people? Well, I would say to them that no matter where you're at in this world, if you look at the calendar, it says 2021. Ha. Something so profound happened on this planet that human existence continues their time continuum from the birth of one infant back in the time when they were writing on papyrus. <laughs> you Come know, on. I, yeah, you know, and, and I know we're going to take a digression here, but one of the things I where that causes me to be a, a pain, an annoyance, a, 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 a thorn in the side, if you will, and a good one, is when I hear this and, it, and this goes along with the same theory, my truth, right? Uh, somebody will talk about a particular year. They'll say 300 BCE, or they'll say 1200 CE. And I'm like, what, what the heck are you? And I know well what they're talking about. What do you mean BCE or CE? They, 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 they said, well, that's before the common era. Huh? Or after the common era. 
Why? Because their truth excludes what we're about to celebrate, God entering the world as a human. They, they can say BCE, they can say CE, but the demarcation, irrespective of what they say, is in fact our Lord. A.D., Anno Domini, in the year of our Lord, my, my, my graduation certificates, most people's professional certificates actually say not A.D., they say in the year of our Lord. You can change it. You can pretend that this is my truth. C.E., it's my truth. Go ahead. It doesn't change the objective reality. That's one of the themes we're going to talk about. Evil is the absence of the acknowledgement of objective reality. Objective reality. It's also the thing that causes us not to be able to communicate to people, right? All boils down to free will. Free will, absolutely right, and, and, and love, right? So let's talk about evil for a second, just in, in terms of its essence. Um, I, I came to Father Augustine. He was, in, he was in, on, on the radio last week, actually, and I told him a particular problem I had or a philosophical problem I had with a, bu- a, a, a friend of mine, a business partner who was really coming into faith, and he was talking about evil in the world, right? And... And, um, and, and whatever route I was going down, I thought I was the smartest guy in the world, and I was trying to describe the issue and the problem. And I said, how do we describe, how do we explain evil in the world? How do we make it make sense? I, I'm not going to give you the, the answer that he told me until I give you some examples, because what he said was perfect. So... As we look around here, and you said it in your prayer, which made me think about it, I can see you. How come I can see you? Because there's light in the room, right? So in, in, the, in the summertime here in St. Louis, we're, we're broiling hot, right? And what do we want to do? We want to make it cool so that we can be more comfortable. And today, when I walked in, it was cold. So here's the question. What is, what is light and what is heat, right? I'm going to flip it on the other side, right? What is darkness? There is no such thing as darkness. Wait a minute, Peter, you're crazy. Of course there's darkness. No, there is not such a thing as darkness. Also, there is no such thing as cold. Wait a minute, Peter, it was cold when we got in. Well, how, how can you say that? Literally, scientifically, from, a, from the um, physics standpoint, darkness is, in fact, the absence of light. Cold is not cold. You don't make something cold. You take away, you take away the heat. That's how you get to cold. You take away heat. So what is evil? Take away the good. You take away the good. Evil is the absence of good. So why can we not explain evil? The plain and simple answer that Father Augustine gave, which I think he was quoting Augustine, was you can't. Evil does not make sense. And if you try and make sense of evil, it will not make sense. How do we deal with evil? With good. I mean, it's the only way to do it. It's the only way to combat evil is you combat evil with good. What did our Lord say? You return evil, you return good for evil. That's how you combat it. It doesn't make sense unless you think about it. Because you know the, what else he said? What? Tell me. He said, you don't understand what I have just done for you. Uh-huh. I have given you the model to live by. For the Son of Man did not come to serve, but to, or, you know, to be served, but to serve when he washed the apostles' feet. I mean, that was the most humble action out of love that he did for us. And that's why I think people 
are so immersed in evil is because they want to serve. They want to be served. They want to, you know, be something that they're not, which they are a child of God, and that's where they need to kind of rest. They've confused the priorities. They've confused the realities. That's what they have done. You're listening to St. Joseph Radio Presents, coming to you live from the Rome of the West, St. Louis, Missouri. Matt Logman in studio today with Peter Karutz on our Evangelization Moments weekend as we will try to help people out to try to be ready for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Matt, you remind me, uh, I just heard a talk by Bishop Barron, and he was giving it to the knights and ladies of Malta, and it's during COVID, so there's no audience. You know, he's kind of talking to himself, kind of like what we do sometimes. And he he referenced four philosophers. Um, I don't know if the first one's a philosopher. I guess he is. Four philosophers. Marx, Nietzsche, Sant, and Foucault. Watch See, your language. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. I, I had to be careful with that. And... You know, just to get to the to to the to the uh, spoiler alert, they all have similar philosophies, but the one thing they all have in common is they deny the existence of God. They deny the existence of God, and Nietzsche and Sant. So Nietzsche is he's a German. Sant, I think, is a Frenchman. But the primary confusion. Uh, especially with Nietzsche and Sant, comes into the confusion between the primacy of essence and existence. I'm going to say that again. The confusion, and and I think part of the reason why they, they reject God, is they confuse the primacy of essence and existence. Um, if, if, if you or I describe a fictional being. Pick a fictional being. A fictional being. Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo. Okay. So the, the, uh, uh, the, the Nietzsche and the Sant would say that the existence is primary. And without existence, you can't have essence. Well, that's obviously absurd. I know Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo has personality, Scooby-Doo, and he's not even real, okay? He's not even real. This is what's so profoundly foolish about these philosophers is that they put the cart before the horse. They do the, you know, the, the, they, they, they put the wrong order on things. And why do they do it? Because they have existence as primary as, as having primacy. Why? You'll get it when I say it. It isn't about the essence of something. It's about my interpretation of it, my will, my belief, my truth. And, with, and by doing so, they, uh, they reject the objective truth, the objective good, right? If there is no objective pure good, there is no God. So... As we focus in on ourselves, our existence, we reject the creator. And we, we foul up our whole systems. I mean, these guys are famous. I mean, best, writing best-selling books, changing the philosophy of people, and they're shoving us in the wrong direction. Erst eine Dunkhoff, ja? Jawohl. Jawohl. So let's, let's, let's remember that essence is really the important thing. When we, when we are talking to our atheist friends, the first thing they will say is, there can be no God because if there was an all-good God, he wouldn't allow bad things to happen to good people. Well, are they, are I'm they gonna, right? I'm going to play good cop, bad cop. Good, that. do it. I think that the atheists are only a small part of the problem huh? because Satan already has them. And who was he working harder on but our Christian brothers and sisters? Uh-huh. He is trying to separate us from God by his many wiles and deceivements. He is the prince of lies. So therefore, I believe a lot of the evil in the world comes 
from a Christian human being versus an atheist human being? Uh, I think I think you I, t- I think what I keyed on with what you just said is he's the prince of lies, right? So we and you talk about attacking Christians, right? I always say the Germans never bombed Japan, right? <laughs> you know, the devil's not going to attack the people on his own side. He's going after the people who are his enemy, a la the screw tape letters. But so, w- w- what? Why? Um, can you tell? I lost my train of thought. Uh, say again what you just said. That I think the evil that we see in the world comes from Christian beings. Yes, there human it is. Beings. Right. But where's the lie that we get from the, from the devil? The biggest target, of course, are Christians, no doubt about it. And how is he attacking them? The biggest new denomination out there, the most fastest growing, is that most fastest growing denomination is the nuns. The N O N E, the people who have no denomination, no faith, they're saying it's okay not to believe in anything. And the lie that the devil is promoting there is that that is a state of being. It is not. There is no such thing as a vacuum. The world abhors a vacuum. When you say you're a nun, N-O-N-E, no faith, no belief, you know, you're agnostic or a, a, not even to the atheist, you're agnostic. You will be filled up with something. There is no such thing as a vacuum. You cannot be none. You will. You are prime territory to be invaded by the evil one, and that's the lie. It's okay to be none or have no faith or don't believe. And what happens? He just makes you prime target for the evil that is to come. Not only that, it's nonstop as he prowls about the world like a lion seeking to consume all these souls. It's nonstop, and people need to realize, like we said at the beginning of the program, that it is a spiritual battlefield, and thank God we do have the armor of Christ. Yeah. You know, part yep. of the reason why we're here to evangelize yep. is there is a solution. And, and you know what? You know, I, I remember my daughter, when we had some people over at the house, they were in high school, and she was talking to this guy. He was, a, he was Latin. He was a foreign exchange student, and she, he admitted kind of like a fly on the wall, I was in the other room, that he doesn't believe in God. And I remember my daughter saying to him, boy, that doesn't even make sense, right? It doesn't even make sense. And, 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 he, and she said, even from a selfish standpoint, if you're, if you're right, who cares? But if you're wrong, you know, you got all eternity of hell to look forward to. Doesn't, it doesn't make sense. And, and what, what comes to mind is it doesn't make sense. Right, I mean, she was um, she was promoting um, 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 that argument, but Pythagoras, not Pythagoras, but um, boy, I'm not doing well today. Anyway, so she was she was uh, objecting to what does not make sense. Why? Because it's simple. But not believing in God is a simple thing. So if we if it is a simple answer, let's go to a simple solution. Have you, do you remember the, I think it was in the 80s, maybe the 70s, uh, do you remember John Denver? Oh, yeah, Rocky Mountain High. George Burns? Oh, Cigar. And do you remember how they combined in the movie? I do not. Oh, God. George Burns was God. And well, John, John, Denver was, <laughs> John Denver was confronted by God in his bathroom while he was shaving. He had half his, half his face shaved. And, and, and there's this old man with a cigar claiming to be God in his bathroom, and he's, he's as confused as can be. And, and, and he, he's, he, he's never been confronted with the idea of, is there a God? And he's saying, I don't believe in God. And, and, and he says, if there is a God, how, 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 how come you, know, you look at all the famine, all the suffering, all the good people who die, you look at all the people in the hospitals, how, how, and, and the wars, right? The senseless killing... How can you be if this exists? How can you allow it? And I guess it's a little bit of a right turn, but George Burns looks at him calmly, takes a puff on the cigar and says, I don't, you do. And, and from a simplistic standpoint, it is the first step in understanding free will, right? God has endowed us with free will. If we were robots, we... We, we, well, we couldn't have the ability to love. No one forces somebody to love somebody. 
You can only do it with free will. And as a result, there's a lot of danger. There's a lot of possibility for bad things. A lot of possibility for bad things. So where are we falling short as the Catholic community to express just by the way we live God's pure and holy love in all of us and the joy that can only come from God and the understanding. How are we falling short to let these people know that, hey, you should try to get what we have? I mean, because obviously that's not happening. I think we need to, uh, yeah, again, this is evangelization moments. How do we common folk, us regular Catholic, spread the gospel? And I, th- I think one of the primary things is that we need to meet people where they're at, right? And we need to live our faith in a common and customary fashion. I, I have some friends who are Jewish. They wear their yarmulkes all the time. Would it, would it, uh, can you imagine, you know me pretty well, I can be coarse, I guess, but can you imagine even me going up to someone who is a, a very devout Jew and say, will you take that yarmulke off? It's a little bit uncomfortable for me. It's, it's a triggering point for me. I don't particularly like that you wear that yarmulke. Now, I wouldn't do it. Can you imagine anybody doing such a thing? Well, since my boss is a Jewish carpenter, I would never say that. <laughs> but we as Catholics, we need to wear our yarmulkes, live our faith, say grace at the table, talk about faith in a common and customary and, and easy way. I'll pray for you. I need, to, I need your prayers. I, you know, I, I went to adoration yesterday. Bring it into the common parlance and then let people know how much you care about them. All right, for the folks who are watching us live on YouTube, we have for you a 10 by 18. That's right, 10 by 18 canvas of the divine mercy. Jesus, I trust in you. These are free. All you have to do is pick them up or pay for the postage. How is that for a last-minute Christmas gift, huh, Peter? It's a good one. It's a good one. And it's beautiful. It is. We'll be right back, my friends. This is St. Joseph Radio Presents. Looking for a way to teach your children about our Catholic faith? Colby Academy has the solution. Offering a curriculum that is loyal to the magisterium, classical, Ignatian, flexible and affordable, Colby can help with all your homeschooling needs. We offer a wide range of services, including live online courses for those looking for assistance teaching their students, recorded self-paced courses for those who want teacher instruction while needing the flexibility to move at their own pace, and traditional homeschool courses for maximum flexibility in home education. Our support services include advising for parents, record keeping and transcript services, a grading service, standardized testing, and guidance and college counseling. For more information, check out their website at colby.org. That's K-O-L-B-E dot org. Or give them a call. Area code 707-255-6499. That's 707-255-6499. It's Colby Academy. St. Joseph Catholic Radio is proud to announce the launch of SJEN-TV, the St. Joseph Evangelization Network. SJEN-TV is a premier online Catholic broadcasting network providing quality Catholic programming 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. We have programming such as live studio interviews, St. Joe's Java speaker presentations, current Catholic issues, and the pro-life series. We're featuring the many talented speakers out of Orange County, California, and this Archdiocese of St. Louis, Missouri including Professor John Gresham, Father James Mason, Karen Nokemper, Rick Hollerick, Bill Federer, and many more. To review the program list, go to sjen.tv or on Roku, sjen.tv. All this programming is free, and we are welcoming sponsorship of new programs. Find out more at sjen.tv. Or next day, my friends, find some information that we have Go to our, our wealth of information on our website and, and just check out all the stuff that we have that you can educate yourselves. We can't leave it all up to the priest, my friends. They have so much time. If you only give them one hour a week, how are you going to be ready for the battle that we're all in? We need to make it 
ours. We need to take this upon ourselves. We need to learn about our faith, this beautiful treasure trove of faith. And we have it right here at our fingertips. This is it, my friends. You can help save all them souls out there, one soul at a time, as we like to do. As I was showing the picture of the Jesus I trust in you. Peter, do you have the address if they want to come by and pick it up? I do, yeah, I do. And uh, this is a uh, image of the divine mercy and at the bottom of it it's a really really good it's beautiful it's big it says jesus i trust in you the address is uh, 1985 blue stone drive it's in st charles missouri 1985 blue stone drive it's right by the amc theater and by the way it really works in the gps i've, I've put it in before so it'll get you right here easy to get to i gotta tell you this is a picture this is an image that nobody can can reject. It's a wonderful way to evangelize, right? Come on by, pick one up, get a little tour of uh, our facility. We have a chapel. We have, of course, the uh, radio studio. We have TV studio here as well. But um, come by and, and visit the chapel, say a prayer, and, and pick up one of these, and give it to a friend, and give it to, to someone who might not, uh, might, might need it. And most of the priests are willing to tell you that they can tell you if they come to your house just by looking in your bookcase what type of person you might be. Is that right? <laughs> yes, I've heard that many times. And I looked around and, well, I, I, I'm in good shape because even though half the books, I'm only halfway through. <laughs> but, yeah, the, the information is just uh, astounding. I'm in trouble with my wife with regard to books and bookcases. So we, she has given me a rule. See, I, I'm all grown up and, I, and I'm still getting rules. But she says that I have to give away my books now. If I read it, I have to give it away because they just keep coming. And, and you know what? That really is a, a good rule, right? If I, if I read a book that I really, really like and love, what could be better than to give it to somebody else? Most definitely. Right? You and know? if it's that good and you need to read it again, buy another one. There is, yeah, and I've done that too. Mm-hmm. And you know what I've also done is, just to digress here, we are, this is evangelization moments, right? And one of the things I have done when I have found a book I really, really like is I will buy not another copy. I'll buy a case of them. I'll buy a case. And then I have them in my trunk, and I literally do give them away. And you wouldn't believe what opportunities there are for that. Brilliant minds think alike. We have a box of books at home right now. Uh, do you really? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Our, our parish is actually giving away one that I've given away, I, I won't say hundreds, but I will say well over 50 times, because I know I've purchased at least that many, The Imitation of Christ. It's a great, great book. You, and what's nice about it is it's, you know, it was written in, what, the 1100s, I think, the 1200s, and it predates the, the separation of uh, our, our Protestant brothers and sisters. And you can buy one with a forward from a Protestant or a forward from a, a, a Catholic, and, and, and it's a great way to create unity right? It's a great way to create unity, and it's a great way to evangelize. One of the things we're talking about is how do we evangelize? Uh, And sometimes I think we can do it accidentally. Let me talk about accidentally, or we get lucky, right? Evangelization via luck. Uh, There was an interview with Larry Bird. I'm aging myself. And Larry Bird, go ahead, correct me if I'm wrong, was looked like a lame like a like a wounded duck when he shot the ball. You know, he didn't jump very high. His form was odd to say the least. And he's being interviewed by some short guy and he's he in the short guy interviewer is actually saying, "Man, you 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 shoot poorly. You have terrible form. You don't jump." He says, "Man, you just look like you're getting lucky when the ball goes in." And and Larry says, "Yeah, I think you're right." He says, uh, I come to the stadium hours ahead of time. I shoot 100 free throws every time. I do 100 uh, jump shots every, every day before the game. I, it, anyway, he goes on and on. He says, the more I practice, the luckier I get. And that's what we were talking about before. The luckier I get, the more I practice, right? So if we practice our faith, if faith becomes something casual and common, you will get lucky in your evangelization. Uh, I, I was on Facebook and I found something, I was actually on the internet, and I found something that I thought was really, really cool. Because when I talk about, you talk about saying the rosary, when I, when I um, say the rosary 
and I talk to my Protestant friends about it, I say, hey, man, all we're doing is praying the Gospels. That's what the rosary is. We're praying the Gospels. So I found a post uh, or a sign, a picture. I took a picture of it. And what the picture was, it's, it says, the word rosary may not be in the Bible, but surely the Bible is in the rosary. And it goes through all of the four um, uh, uh, sets of mysteries, and all, each, uh, each has five, of course. And it gives a short Bible verse that, that shows the foundation for it. I thought it was cute. I thought it was cool. Uh, at last count, I have 65 conversations that have started. Learn it. Love it. Live it. <laughs> and, and, and these are Catholics and Protestants and non-believers. And it, it was just a, a throwaway. It was just, hey, man, I think that's cool. And what is it? You have people talking about faith. That is what a miracle is, right? I have a great friend, Monsignor Gaelic, and, 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 and he, his definition of a miracle is where there is an outpouring of faith. Man, we can have accidental miracles. Put faith in your common parlance. Common parlance. I, I have a good friend who's in the hospital right now kind of suffering with surgeries and bad surgeries and... Uh, so, John, we're, we're praying for you. And it was about, I don't know, 1 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I said, because uh, uh, I, I was also on the Internet at the same time, I said, John, can I share a night prayer with you? And he said, yeah, I'd love it. So we shared a night. I, I texted it to him. We shared a night prayer. It was the best part of our conversation. You know, sometimes that's all we can do to, is, is, to, is to say a prayer. And... And, and there we are coming to our theme again. That's one of the stumbling blocks for those who reject God. How can God allow such a good man to suffer so much, right? We don't really we, understand. You know, the, the things that he might be relieving himself of, possibly uh, a lot of time in purgatory, you know, for his soul, the salvation of his soul. That's why... I think a lot of people have to go through these trials. Right, and we need to remember that our relationship with, with, with God is not one, as the Muslims have, master and slave. We have a familial relationship Abba. with us. Abba. Yeah, daddy, right? And, and when bad things happen, you know, in terms of our perception of a bad thing, think of being a child and thinking of what the bad thing is. And as, as, as the parent, you're thinking, oh, man, no, it's not bad. It's, it's, it's good. It's, you need it. it. Our Lord, I forget where it is in Scripture, says you, sometimes our Lord prunes us. Sometimes we need this, right? Think of, I, I, there was a, another talk that um, you all have got to look up one day, uh, Dinesh D'Souza, who's a who's known as a kind of a political conservative. And what I've discovered, is he's a very strong Christian. I don't know if he's Catholic, but I wouldn't doubt it. And he had a debate with, um, with, with an atheist uh, named Bart Ehrman. And, and the foundation of the talk, the existence of God, was Bart Ehrman's inability to reconcile Suffering in the world and the existence of God. And I mean, no way, no how. No way, no how. And the one thing I think he missed is what I call yesterday. How about the crucifixion? Yeah. The greatest evil in the world, if you will, the most unjust event that ever happened, the most just man being condemned to a cruel death. And look at the good that came out of it. That's right. I mean, look at the good that came out of it. And that's the whole problem. When we look at, and I'm trying to make a segue and a separation between evil and suffering, because I think so often we combine those terms oh. and we use them in a uniform and, 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 and um, interchangeably. They're not interchangeable. There is a huge difference between evil and suffering. Suffering. The best term I ever heard as far as people that had to suffer was from Bishop Herman. 
Oh. He was talking about a visit to a rest home. Uh. And the conditions were not exactly what we would like to put our family in. It was very downtrodden, very sad, very just just looking like, oh, my gosh. And he said to me, if this is kindergarten for eternity, where do I sign up? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. You know, when you think about the millennium that has existed in the eyes of God, and we have 80 years, maybe, May, maybe. A blink of an eye, yeah. suffering is, is is not even to be considered. Come on, really? When Christ did what he did, he came and gave us that model, and he came to serve, not be served. He came to die. That's what we're all called to do. Why are people worried about the evil that, that oh, my gosh, I have to suffer? I got to die? That's what, if, if it's okay for God, you know, even Mother Teresa, when asked, if you could change one thing in the world, what would it be? And she said, myself. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. But that, that's the – I think you are, you are really nailing it. The idea of suffering, the two things we're, me, we're missing is that someday tomorrow will be yesterday. Someday tomorrow will be yesterday. You mentioned Bishop Herman. The, one of the best quotes I think I've, had, I've heard with regard to suffering – is from Fulton Sheen when he passed the hospital and he said, look at all the wasted suffering. So I'm not changing the subject. I am on the same subject. You know, when we see people in crisis, right, that I'm using a different word than suffering, right, they may be suffering, but they may be in crisis. And where we can look at someone and have great admiration for them is how they handle and endure that crisis, right? There's one thing to suffer, and there's another thing entirely to endure and manage the crisis. It has to do with attitude. Bishop Sheen was saying, look at all the wasted suffering in there. These are people in crisis who could flip the suffering into managing the crisis. Wow. How? Forgive them, Father, for they oh, not know what they do. Offer it. Offer it. Offer it up to our Lord. Offer it up. Realize that our Lord is one suffering with you, and he's giving you an opportunity to suffer for him. Why? For good. And, and, and for our brothers and sisters who will say, what in the world are you talking about? Give me something in Scripture. I'll go to Colossians 1.24, where Paul says, I rejoice in the suffering of my body for you, the church, so that it makes up what is lacking in Christ. There is nothing lacking in Christ's suffering but for what he welcomes us to, to participate in it. He is not lacking anything, but he wants us to participate with him. Manage the crisis. Stop looking inward at you. Start looking at outward into what God's will is. Like I said before, these two, two atheists, um, uh, philosophers, Nietzsche and Sant, they confused essence with existence. The suffering is my existence. That's the primary thing. That's all that matters. It's all about me, as opposed to essence, the good that God has in mind. Now talking about today and tomorrow and yesterday. We, everybody in this room, and everybody out there has endured suffering. All of us. And I use the past tense. Some are in the present tense, enduring suffering as we speak. But we know soon, today will be yesterday. So think of it this way. When you're in the midst of your suffering, say, soon it will be tomorrow. And your suffering will be yesterday. Endure it well today. Manage the crisis well today with dignity. Offer it to our Lord. Realize that our Lord is in charge and he has something good in mind for you. You might not be able to see it, but trust. Hey, have you ever been on a plane? I have. I, I've been on a plane when we... I was we've, a flight attendant for five years. You've Peter. been in it. Well, then, then you'll, you'll see this. I've been in a plane in crisis. 
Oh, I have too. I've prepared a cabin for an emergency landing twice. We we lost an engine once. We uh, we were struck by lightning. The engine blew up. Lights blew out. The the plane listed to the left and started going down. You know what? I didn't run up to the cockpit and start advising the pilot as to what to do in this particular emergency well, circumstance. Well, now with your soiled shorts, you <laughs> Well, we'll talk about <laughs> what I did. But the point is, I had confidence in this mere man to manage this crisis. How much more of confidence should we have in God who loves us infinitely, right? He, he would do anything for us and did. Trust in God. When we are in this crisis and we see what we think is evil when we realize it's not evil but it's suffering, manage the crisis. Have confidence in God. Realize that he loves you. And you're listening to St. Joseph Radio Presents, coming to you live from the Rome of the West, St. Louis, Missouri. In studio today, Matt Logan and Peter Kurutz. Now, Peter, as we have all these people that are going to be coming to our homes who are in the midst of suffering, who are in the midst of Satan's attacks, and you know what they're going to say? They're going to say how busy they are. And I'd like to share the quote from Monsignor Wojcicki of ICD. Busy is the acronym which stands for Buried under Satan's yoke. You got to say that again. What, what was that? Buried under Satan's yoke. That's what busy means. He says, uh. we're not busy. We have opportunities. Every day consists of, I don't know how many seconds there are of opportunities. Now, we're going to have that opportunity this coming Christmas when family comes to visit. Family, friends who are not exceeding this joy that... That, that we are, that are feeling in our souls that we want to share. How are we going to do that? We can't argue them in. We can't browbeat them into it. We need to love them into it. Yeah. And that's, that's where I, my son tells me I have a hard time. You know, no, I, I like to debate. I love to debate. I love to debate. But, you know, one of the things I have to keep reminding myself, I look in the mirror and I remind myself, uh, we, we need to be like our Lord is and meet people where they are at. Meet people where they are at. Because we really don't live their lives. We don't understand, you know, what they particularly uh, ha- have grown up with or what their perceptions are. But what we can do is meet people where they were where they're at. How, and, do you, how can we point out to them where their issues are coming from? Because they're probably not discerning the spirits. Yeah. Well, what I would like to do is just tell them where they're wrong and tell them how they can do right, <laughs> and that doesn't do any good at all. <laughs> nope, nope. Too silly. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I remember a story. We're talking about the difference between evil and suffering. I, I, um, there, there was a movie called City of Joy. I think it had to do with the uh, the slums in 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 uh, India. Uh, in the late '80s, I was over at St. John Bosco, and I was I went to an evening, a couple of evenings of talks, videotapes, you know, cassette videotapes, from this Indian priest, and he gave us a different cultural perspective. Seriously, I mean, it's it's a different philosophy, it's a different way of living, right? And he tells a story of what I thought was evil in the world. He told a story about rickshaw drivers, right? These are men who literally are the horse who cart you around from you know, place A to place B, you get to, from A to B, and they're running around. And, and you think, well, that, that's, not a, that's not really nice, but the, they're, they're, they're cheerful, right? And, 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 and this particular one was extraordinarily cheerful. But and They have really good cardio, too. Well... For a period of time, and what, what this priest was trying to describe to us is what is the real circumstance and condition of the rickshaw driver? To put it plainly and simply, they're dying. They're literally dying as they are carting, running you around in this rickshaw because they're not getting the calories they need to sustain their body. I mean, can you? We've all gone for runs. I don't do it anymore because of my knees. But you know the energy it, it, it expends, and you wind up eating more and you lose weight. But these guys did not have the calories to maintain. They were literally wasting themselves away. And in fact, this particular rickshaw driver who he's had a conversation with was exceedingly happy. And he says, "I had, I just got some wonderful, great news." So, well, what is that? He said, "I sold my bones." 
So what do you mean? He said, I, I, the, 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 the medical industry over there would, would uh, contract for people to sell them their bodies once they die. And the medical industry over there would concentrate on rickshaw drivers because their days were very limited. This guy is happy. And, and finally, this priest says, well, why, why are you so, so happy? He says, I, have, I make great money with this rickshaw. I just got the money for my bones. My family has a nice place to live. I have some future for them. He was completely selfless, right? He was not, he was not concentrating on the primacy of existence. He was con- concentrating on the primacy of primacy of essence, right? The essence of, of good. He was totally selfless. He was a joyful person. He clearly was suffering. So the, the, the person who looks at this from afar and sees evil in the world, he was really enduring suffering. He was managing a crisis, right? How is he doing it? With selflessness, Suffering is not worthless. There is a meaning to suffering, and it's tough to tell somebody in the midst of their suffering where the meaning is. That's why we're doing it today, so that we prepare ourselves for the day that we are going to go through suffering, so we can join our suffering with our Lord and and make good of it, offer it up, Join it with Christ's sacrificial suffering on the cross as he is joining us in our suffering. It's impossible to do in, in, from this intellectual standpoint when you're in the midst of it, but you have to put it into your heart so that you do it accidentally, con- con- unconsciously, when you're in that crisis. John Paul, I don't know if you heard the story, when he was shot, there was a, a bishop with him. And and and, the, and and John Paul is literally dying, lying on the, on on the floor of this uh, open air car, bleeding into the car. Do you know what he did? He forgave was, his assassin. He eventually forgave his assassin, but he started saying the rosary. You know, we have to train ourselves by our practice as to what we should do in crisis, by the way that we behave in our normal lives. What do we do? We default to, to prayer. We default to crisis. This picture that we have here, this icon of the, uh, of, of the divine mercy, at the bottom of it says, Jesus, I trust in you. A, a friend told me one time, when you're in crisis, when you don't know what to do, when you don't know where to go, you can't articulate where, where, what, what to say, when you find evil in the world and have no idea what to do with it, the simplest and the most profound and the most honest prayer you can make is, Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Peter, good job. We'll do this again in three or a month, actually. A month, every right. third Saturday. And hopefully the people will have had a beautiful, wonderful, blessed Christmas as they focus on others. It's not about us, brothers and sisters. Christ even said that. He came. He gave us the model. He came not to be served, but he came to serve. Folks, start your day with God. Live your day with God. Finish your day with God. And keep that smile on your face. My name is Matt Logman and Peter Karutz. And in the other room there, we have Clayton and Bob. We all wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And don't forget to give us a call, 636-447-6000, and you can get a copy of this 10 by 18 canvas of uh, the Divine Mercy and Jesus, I Trust in You. I hope you can come by and pick yours up. We're looking forward to seeing you. 1985 Bluestone Drive. Amen, brother. Until next time. 
You've been listening to St. Joseph Radio Presents from the Rome of the West, St. Louis, Missouri. If you would like to join us in our evangelization efforts, you can order a copy of today's broadcast or any of our past programs by visiting us on our website, stjosephradio.net. That's S-A-I-N-T, josephradio.net. Or call us, 636-447-6000. It's all at your fingertips to help us evangelize the world, bringing the good news of Christ to everyone you meet and change one soul at a time. Thank you for your prayers and support. Until next time, may God bless you and your family. This has been a presentation of St. Joseph Radio Presents.